What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your man's Nicholas. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. Uh, I'm going to close that blind for you right quick. We are doing 2019 fantasy football mock draft today, but we got a little twist on this. What's up, cat? Some cat just freaked out because I was closing the window. <clears throat> so, we're doing this on the Sleeper app today. And if you have never used a sleeper app, you can actually invite all your friends to mock draft with you. I don't have any friends. Luckily, I have subscribers, though, and you guys are my virtual friends. So I invited y'all. I basically opened up this mock draft. I, um, I tweeted this out. I put it on my YouTube community section or whatever. So make sure you're following me on my other socials because I'm constantly doing stuff like this where I'm inviting my subscribers and, and trying to engage with y'all as much as possible. So pretty much we opened up. A 2019 fantasy football mock draft. This is 10 teams. This is a super flex mock draft, which means you not only have one quarterback spot, but you have a spot in your roster in which you can start a quarterback, a wide receiver, a running back, or a tight end, which means you are going to start a second quarterback in your lineup. So we are just waiting for one more subscriber to join. As you can see, we got the little chat action going. Let's fucking go. So we got the nine other nine other subscribers. Waiting on that last, 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 last one to start. And then we're going to kick this bad boy off. I am in the eighth spot. So as we go through this, I want you to kind of pay a little bit more attention to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Y'all understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? That's what I want you to do. That's the ultimate takeaway. I wouldn't put too much emphasis on my draft strategy right now and how my overall team looks at the end. Because I think as we segue more into the summer and we have an idea for how to um, how to you know uh, circulate our draft around an actual strategy, like in terms of okay, I want to go with two running backs to start off because I know that in the third round, running backs kind of drop off a little bit. Um, I, I'm more so just giving you my player analysis right now, and I'm going to make fun of a lot of people's teams as they go throughout this draft. Uh, so this should just be a fun one. So sit back, stop yelling, tuck your shirts in. Grab your poop emoji cup. And let's get it. Come on, bro. Where's the ninth person? You'd think with a fucking audience of 15,000 people, I could fill up a spot. Where are you? Where's my Twitter? Let me go retweet my Twitter. Let's go, peoples. One more spot. Um, okay, yeah. So every Friday we're going to be doing mock drafts. I'm probably going to switch them around on the Sleeper app, on Draft.com or the Draft app, on the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard and Fantasy Football Calculator. Those are probably my favorite spots to draft right now. Um, sleeper is completely free. You could set it up very customizable. However you want to, um, however you want to do it. I might just claim this last spot. All right. I'm going to be famous now. I'm on TV. <laughs> so if, yeah, if you want to start practicing, my favorite one is the draft app draft.com because Every league that you actually enter, it's a best ball league, and you are paying to enter them. Um, but you could enter leagues that actually they have free ones available. But you could pay to enter them for as low as a dollar. So it's like it's not high stakes. You could enter, you can you know throw in ten dollars into your account and and draft for like the next two months off that ten dollars. Hey, we got the last spot filled. Let's go. Kickoff time, baby. Um. Obviously, Saquon goes off the board first. Um, but yeah, draft.com, you can do it a dollar. You can do a dollar draft. But the fact that everyone actually puts real money in means that they're actually you know competing and they're going to have serious picks along the draft. So you got a real feel for where, where players are going and, and how the drafts are going. So if you uh, if you are interested in getting like a realistic draft at this point, I would go to draft.com. If you use promo code BDGE, you will get a free $3 to draft with so there goes you know a nice little little draft action for you 
So we have Saquon Barkley, C-Mac off the board first. Um, not really surprising here. This is, again, half PPR, super flex. Two running back start, two wide receiver start, two regular flexes. So wide receiver, tight end, running back. Saquon, C-Mac, Zeke off the board. Odell at four. All right. I get the hype with Odell. My, my thing with Odell is I'm, I'm probably still not going to touch him within the first eight to ten picks. Like, I know he went to Cleveland. The reason I was I was down on Odell in New York, I think I had him at about wide receiver nine prior to being moved to Cleveland. But when it comes to him going to Cleveland, obviously his upside shoots up, right? His, uh, his ceiling is through the roof now, playing with a great quarterback. That does excite me, but at the same time, the reason that I was scared of him, the reason I had him ranked so low was because of his injury concern. I'm sh fucking terrified of Odell Beckham's injury concerns. So the reason I faded him was not because he was playing with Eli. If he was on the field, he was going to be a stud. There was no doubt about it, right? Regardless of who his quarterback was. Um, but him going to Cleveland does not clarify his injury concerns, right? He's missed a lot of games over the last two years. He dealt with a lot of injuries early on in his career. And, you know, uh, I'm going to have Dr. Jesse Morse back on my channel to talk about injuries for the wide receiver position uh, in a couple of weeks. If you missed the running back one, it was a great, great, great episode with him. Tons of valuable information on guys like Todd Gurley, Darius Geis, Leonard Fournette, Devonta Freeman, Melvin Gordon. Um, I'm definitely forgetting some names, but some other Dalvin Cook. So as you can see here, and I think this is going to be a reason why, because these are all my subscribers, and now I get fucked because all y'all follow me, basically. Um, Saquon, C-Mac, Zeke, Alvin Kamara, Melvin Gordon. They obviously watched the, um, the video with Dr. Jesse Morris explaining why Todd Gurley is an absolute, um, is an absolute risk at, in, in the first round. And I'll explain that in a second. I want to make my pick. So we're at the eighth spot right now. And this is a super flex, so I'm, I'm assuming Patrick Mahomes is going to be a top five pick in almost every super flex league this year. And I normally just don't want to take a quarterback that early, but it is nice owning Patrick Mahomes, especially at the eight spot. Um, let me think for a minute. I don't want Gurley, and again, I'll explain that in a sec. I can take one of these top wide receivers, but I don't think they have as much value. So I'm going to grab Mahomes. Okay, so we have Patrick Mahomes go off the board, um, and then Devontae Adams. So I, w I was hoping, you know, a Melvin Gordon would fall to me there, but he was picked before. And uh, all of these guys clearly are not a fan of him. If he comes back to me in, in the second round, I will likely grab Todd Gurley there. Although I do love Dalvin Cook, and I might have to take Dalvin Cook in the first round of the E-Town Get Down League because Snacks is behind me. And um, and Snacks loves Dalvin Cook, and he's going to have either the 9 and 12 pick or the 10 11 pick, and Dalvin Cook's not getting back to me. So I might have to reach for him in the first round because I'm a huge fan. Skona, where are you up, bro? So we have Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas. That's actually interesting. So four wide receivers off the board, five running backs. I thought it would be a little more running back heavy. But as you get to the end of the first round, you see a lot of – um, a lot of the elite wide receivers start to go because they're at the top of their class and those guys have a lot of consistency to their game, obviously, where running backs kind of turn over and you don't know. There's Joe Mixon, there's Dalvin Cook, David Johnson, Le'Veon. You know, I don't necessarily really feel confident in any of those guys outside of Dalvin Cook because I, I like Joe Mixon, right? He's set up for a monster workload. The problem with Joe Mixon is we have this new coaching staff coming in, right? We have Brian Callahan taking over as OC. We have Zach Taylor taking over as the head coach. Neither of them have even held a coordinator position in the NFL, right? So you have this team being totally taken over. And, of course, you're going to get excited because you want to get rid of Marvin Lewis, right? Um, yeah, let's go. <laughs> you want to get rid of Marvin Lewis. 
because the a <laughs> you want to get ah, fuck he took Dalvin Cook. You want to get rid of Marvin Lewis and, you know, get a more up-tempo offense. You want to get an offense that runs more plays per game, that scores more points per game. Um, and, you know, I'm going to go with a really bold strategy here. Now, I might think about taking Joe Mixon here because obviously you don't want to pass on the running backs. But I really think that, okay, so here's the problem. Like, if you don't like Patrick Mahomes, it's probably because you're a little nervous about Tyree Kill, right? We don't know if Tyree Kill is going to get a suspension. If he's off the field, that obviously hurts Mahomes, and I would not be taking Patrick Mahomes at, at the 108 in the Superflex League. But if Tyree Kill is off the field, that makes Travis Kelsey so much more valuable. He's going to get, you know, upwards of, he might set the record for tight end targets in a single season. And, uh, and I have no idea what that actually is, but I'd imagine it's very high. And I'd imagine Travis Kelsey, if Tyree Kill gets suspended for six to eight games, He's going to have astronomical numbers and, you know, pair that up. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey together. Love that. Although it's, you know, it's scary passing on those running backs um, in the first couple of rounds. And that's probably not a strategy I would take in any of my high stakes leagues. But since we're mocking, you guys know I like to just mess around and kind of. Uh... And try out different things. Um, in other news, if you guys are interested in joining Dynasty Leagues, I have two options for you. Myself, Snacks, and Animal. If, you, if you're unfamiliar with Fade the Public podcast, we put out a Fade the Public episode every Thursday. Um, and that is me and two of my league mates who play in a high-stakes leagues together. We've been in it for, this is going to be our 11th year. And uh, it's a high stakes league, and we basically get together and just talk about the league, um, as well as you know relating it to just fantasy stuff in general, and talk about pop culture and all that stuff. So it's a fun episode. Fade the public. We are opening up a dynasty league, so you will be playing um, against us for life, pretty much. You will literally be playing with us for life. So there are two ways to enter. We're doing a raffle for the other eight spots. So myself, snacks, animal, and then my video editor Scott. We have four spots. Eight spots left open. Two of them will be completely free. If you want to enter the raffle to get into that Dynasty League, I will link it. It's a Google form. It's basically like an application kind of, but it's just like, it's just like two things you got to fill out. That will be free. Two spots are free. Four the, or six of the spots will be paid spots, and that is for the GoFundMe. GoFundMe.com slash Big Dogs Draft. Myself, Snacks, and Animal are headed to the NFL Draft in Nashville later in April, which is going to be a fucking wild weekend. Um, so... If you donate to the GoFundMe, for every dollar you donate, you get an entry. And then out of the entries, we will raffle off six of the spots. So obviously, if you go through the GoFundMe, you have a lot more chances because there's a lot more spots there. Um, but there's always free too because I don't want to charge everybody for that shit. But yeah, go go check that out. I'll link all that information down below. Um, and then I'm opening up Big Dogs Only Dynasty Subscriber Leagues for my Patreon. So patreon.com slash bdge. I have partnered with Flea Flicker. I have partnered with Team Stake. So they are going to be paid money leagues um, in which you can enter at $35, $75, and then high stakes $175 Dynasty Leagues. Um, but if you want more information on that, head over to patreon.com slash BDGE. Let's catch you up. Um, so I went Travis Kelsey in the second round. Joe Mixon went off the board. Juju Smith-Schuster, I like that. Although I don't like Julio Jones dropping below Mike Evans and below Juju. Uh I mean, Julio's as safe as there is at wide receiver. 80 catches, 1,400 yards. Plus, I think he has even more of a ceiling um, than that. I think that's that's really his floor. His game hasn't dropped off whatsoever. They're talking about extending him another four to five years. We had Le'Veon Bell go off the board, then David Johnson. So that's a nice little stack right there. C-Mac and Le'Veon Bell, Saquon, David Johnson, Antonio Brown. The tough part about Superflex, especially with people who don't play it often, and I'm assuming a lot of these guys don't, is they fade the quarterback position early to stack up those skill players. And that's a that's a strategy I like to do as well. But that can kind of bite you in the butt pretty quickly. Um, so we have, I might, I might just grab Tyree Kill if he falls to me. So we have George Kittle go off the board there, second tight end. Andrew Luck was the only other quarterback that, um, that went off the board. He went in the second round. I think that's probably going to be about accurate. 
I think we'll see Patrick Mahomes go in the first, and I think Luck and Rodgers will probably make their way into the second, depending on how big the league is, because this is only 10 teams. Uh, in a 12-team league, the, all those guys will probably be off the board in, this, in the first two rounds. Deshaun Watson would flirt with the second, late second round, I'm assuming, and probably meddle with the third round in these 10-team leagues. Um, so I probably won't be looking at quarterback. I might, though. If I'm in a league like this, where they're just all fading the quarterback, uh, there's going to be value there. Like getting a guy like Deshaun Watson or or uh, Baker Mayfield and pairing with Patrick Mahomes. It's like, yeah, your team looks nice getting all those running backs and those wide receivers. Uh, but like when you have a quarterback, you know, when when you're going to end up with quarterbacks like Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins, and then you're uh, on a weekly basis playing against the Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson, you're going to have trouble beating that team. So it's like, yes, you could fade the quarterbacks and make your team look kind of cute, but can't do it. Can't do it. So all three tight ends are off the board. All three of the top tight ends are off the board in the first three rounds, which I'm not surprised by. I think that's going to be the case for nearly every league this year. Um, those three positions are just so... Those three guys at the position are just so valuable between Kelsey, Kittle, and Ertz. Um, then Amari Cooper goes off the board. I don't know if I like that pick with Terry Kill still on the board. I mean, listen, I, I know the whole Terry Kill situation looks really, really shitty, but we don't really know what's going on. Remember what happened with LaShawn McCoy last year? How many games did he get suspended? Zero games. Zero. Stefan Diggs off the board. Let me see what's going on with running back. Sony Michel, carry on, Geis, Fournette, Marlon Mack. So I would likely be looking at um, either carry on Johnson or, um, oh, you know what? Watch this. They're going to go nuts because they didn't realize Damian Williams was all the way down there. Ah, ah, ah. So three KC Chiefs to start off. Watch the chat's about to explode. Oh, I didn't see Damian Williams down there. Give it like five seconds. I'll take Damian down there all day. I, I don't care that I have three Chiefs right now. I mean, it's going to be the most high-powered offense in the NFL, likely again. Maybe, maybe they'll contend with the Indianapolis Colts, but. Looking at Damian Williams, I mean, what he did last year was ridiculous. They signed him to that extension. Um, what's crazy is he didn't run the ball a crazy amount. Over those last six games, that was like, that's what we're banking on with Damian Williams, right? Over the last six games, um, that's when he exploded. He had more than 13 carries just one time over those, over those last six games, but he averaged like five receptions a game, and he scored 10 total touchdowns in six games which is crazy, but which is crazy, but that's also what Kareem Hunt did, basically. Over, over Hunt's last six games before he got suspended, he threw up nine touchdowns. So it's like whoever is in that role is going to be so involved and so many opportunities near the end zone are going to be coming their way um, that, damn, are they just going to keep timing him out? Can I auto put put him on auto drift? So he goes Terry Kill. He just keeps getting stuck with <laughs> all the people that uh, other people don't want, like Gurley and Terry Kill. Uh, oh, I didn't talk about Gurley. So the reason everyone was fading Gurley is because when I brought Dr. Jesse Morse on. Um, he said that the arthritis in Todd Gurley's knee is a really, really, really big deal. And it's likely going to plague him in 2019. So he is a very, very risky first round pick. Um, there's probably a reason why they re-signed Malcolm Brown. Let me see if I could do something with Skono. All right, so he goes Terry Kill. Uh, and this is great because I'll be able to get another one of those running backs. So the way this draft started off was actually fantastic for me, going with Mahomes, Kelsey, Damian Williams, because now I can still get carry on and Marlon Mack. And I have Marlon Mack ranked above carry on Johnson. So I filled up my two running back spots, although I faded to position for the first two rounds. And just knowing based off the amount of drafts I've done um, so far, there is... There is um, a lot of value at wide receiver, you know, in the fifth, sixth rounds of draft, especially in a 10-teamer. 
Like I'll I'll likely be able to get one of the Rams wide receivers in in the <laughs> in the fifth round, whether that's Woods or Cooper Cup. Um, and, you know, obviously you're not going to get as high upside or as consistent of producers at the wide receiver position that much later in the draft. But when you're able to secure a Patrick Mahomes and Superflex, a Travis Kelsey, and then two really solid running backs, you're not really too concerned with like high level production at wide receiver. Because at the end of the day, I mean, if I can grab uh, a Chris Godwin playing in that slot wide receiver role for that Bruce Arians offense and pair him with like a, a Jeffrey who's going to score a touchdown every other game. Um, grab like a Tyler Boyd, Christian Kirk towards the end, you know, it's like get your studs at the top and then pad the depth that you need at the position that you didn't get the elite players at. And that's probably going to be for the most part, my, my strategy right now in this draft. So I like how, I like how this worked out, but like I said, in high stakes leagues, I'm, I'm probably not going to use a strategy like this because it's risky, right? And there's a good chance that if you do go with quarterback tight end, like you're not going to get Damian Williams is probably not going to get dropping to the third round like he'll likely go in the mid second round of most redraft leagues this year um because they signed carlos hyde but all that tells me is that it's damian williams's job carlos Hyde got signed to a one-year 2.8 million dollar contract if they gave him like a tevin coleman type deal like two years eight to ten million dollars i would say yeah he's definitely going to be more involved but that's absolutely just a depth a depth thing they have darrell williams on the roster and they have carlos hyde and damian williams um, so it's Damian Williams' job to lose. The GM came out and already said that he, ha- he has a starting role. Them signing Carlos Hyde basically means they're not going to sign anyone else in free agency and they are not going to, um, and they are not going to draft a rookie. And if they do, I- I'm sure the rookie will be in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. And if that's the case, then I'm not nervous about it at all. So Deshaun Watson fell all the way to the fourth round as did Aaron Rodgers. I was going to say, if Deshaun Watson came back to me here, I'd absolutely take him there. Um... But otherwise, if since I, I like the tier, in my opinion, the tier break drops off. Actually, I think Baker is, is kind of in a tier as well by himself here. So if Baker were to fall to me, I would probably grab him in the fifth round. Um, but otherwise, after Baker, it would I would probably wait and just grab a guy like it's crazy because on, on a on a site by site basis, like you see Carson Wentz up here. But on draft.com, he's like quarterback 14. And then you see James Winston down here at like quarterback 15. And on draft, he's like quarterback seven or something. So um, it, it's just interesting in that sense, I guess. Yep. So here come the quarterbacks. We have Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield off the board. And I promise you in a regular super flex league, these guys just <laughs> wanted to make their teams nice and pretty. Um, Baker and Deshaun Watson and, and Aaron Rodgers not falling this far. So let's just look at the teams thus far. Saquon, David Johnson, Antonio Brown, Leonard Fournette. I'll tell you what, man. Actually, I mean, late second round, at the end of the second round, last pick in the second round, I'm, I'm definitely okay with David Johnson there. I'm not going to be picking him any earlier, though, because... Because... Um, listen, with David Johnson, man, I watched a lot of David Johnson games just because I owned him in a redraft a lot. He was fucking terrible last year. Like, I don't, I know you can make excuses for the team that he was on, but when you look at the pro football focus numbers, his elusive rating was like bottom five in the entire NFL. There were, there were not many running backs that were worse than he was. Elusive rating, missed tackles, force, juke rate on player profilers. So it was all these websites that do their efficiency metrics. David Johnson was miserable. So now you're talking about an entire year where he was bad. And then uh, an entire year before that, that he missed through injury. So we're going on three years that we actually haven't seen David Johnson be good on a football field, right? Um, so that's what makes me nervous. And I know I, I like Cliff Kingsbury coming in and they're going to draft Kyler Murray. So it is going to open things up on the offense, but I'm still not sold on this offense being good. They're going to pass the ball more, but I don't know. I really don't know. Even when Chase, this is going to sound crazy and this is totally me fading the fucking public, but if Chase Edmonds, Chase Edmonds legitimately looked better than David Johnson did when he was on the field last year. Unpopular opinion. Oh man, I hope Cooper Cup falls to me right now. Come on, Cup. I love Cooper Cup. I think Cooper Cup might score 12 touchdowns this year. Jared Goff absolutely loves him in the red zone. And if um, and if Todd Gurley does miss time, like Doc uh, projects him to, then, um, then Cooper Cup is going to be a phenomenal play. Let's see. Devonta Freeman. I, Devonta Freeman's almost off my board. Wow, I didn't realize Aaron Jones fell to the fifth round. Uh, let me look at some of the running backs first. Philip Lindsay, Derrick Henry, 
Trey Cohen. No one I love at running back. Uh, Derrick Henry is a guy, obviously, I, I don't like whatsoever. But in the fifth round, I think he's a pretty good pick. Although I do want to grab a wide receiver here because I am hurting a little bit there. I would probably take Cooper Cup here in hopes that, that the smarter play, because looking at the board right now, he has two wide receivers. He has three wide receivers. So it's unlikely that they take another wide receiver. So the smart play might be going Derrick Henry and then waiting for Cooper Cup to fall to me because I do have flex spots available. So I might run with Derrick Henry because late fifth round, I'm definitely okay with that. Let me see what quarterbacks are on the board still too. I would love to, I kind of want to go with Wentz here. Nah, fuck it. We'll take Derrick Henry. So let's talk about these running backs here. Sony Michelle, all these running backs in the fifth round, I think are a great value. Um, Sony Michelle, he'll be the lead back, but again, dude, he's not going to be involved in the passing game there. I, I think when people look at James White season, when people look, ooh, Mark Ingram, hmm. people look at James White season, when people look at uh, Rex Burkhead was hurt, or Sony Michelle season, I should say, it's because Rex, Rex Burkhead was hurt. When all three are healthy, it's going to be a, a shitty timeshare. I know they're going to ride Sony Michelle into the sunset, and I do like that, but I'd rather have a guy who's not so much game script dependent, and I know I'm saying that as I just picked Derrick Henry. Um, but they're in similar situations, but I think Derrick Henry has less competition there with just Deion Lewis as compared to James White and Rex Burkhead. Devonta Freeman, uh, he might be off my board anywhere before the sixth round, seventh round. I, I don't like the injury concerns. Dr. Jesse Moore said that Devonta Freeman also was a huge injury concern, as is uh, Darius Geis, man. Darius Geis had the infections in his knee, which made things push back. So his ACL surgery was actually pushed back two to three months, which means his timetable to come back at full strength will be later into the season. Now, I know he's a full participant and will likely be doing full participant things at OTAs and throughout the summer. That doesn't mean that he is going to get um, a full workload right away. So I don't think we're actually going to get full workload Darius Geis until about three, four, maybe five, six weeks into the actual season. Um, so he should be good to go the second half of the year. But it's like, do you want to use a fourth round pick on a guy that might not give you that real RB2, RB1 production uh, that early in the draft? It's up to you. I think fifth round, I think that's a, I think that's a great value there. Same with Aaron Jones. I'm not sold on Green Bay wanting to use him as the featured back. I think they've clearly shown that they don't want to. There's reports already that Matt LaFleur said that he wants to use Jones and Jamal Williams as a running back by committee. It doesn't sound like coach speak. I don't know why you would just say that. Otherwise, it would he would just come out and say, like, we want to use Jones. You know, Jones is a guy who could do it all, blah, 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 blah. Jones is another guy like Devonta Freeman, where he's a smaller size. He, he's having trouble proving that he can handle a full featured workload over the course of an entire season. Um, so I, I'm not sold on Aaron Jones getting that 20 touch count. Everyone loves the talent of Aaron Jones. I get it. It's really not that hard to understand, but you have to understand the situation he's in. Wow. Okay. So he went with five wide receivers. Kenyon Drake, ugh, Mario, 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 what are you doing with these running backs, my friend? With with uh, Philip Lindsay and Tariq Cohen still on the board, I would have went both of those guys over him. Um, God, I want to go with Carson Wentz here really fucking bad. I'm not sure there's enough value. If I don't go with a, with a, a stud wide receiver here, I, I still love Cooper Cup and Chris Godwin. Uh, my wide receiver positions are going to be hurting bad. So I'm going to go with Cup here. Cup, Cup like led the NFL in red zone targets his rookie year and was on a blistering pace last year to really be the wide receiver one there in in the Rams offense before he got hurt, obviously. And that you saw like how much of a detriment to the team um that was when he went down. Like Jared Goff just stopped being Jared Goff altogether. So with Cooper Cutback, man, I, I think he's a sneaky bet to finish as a top twelve wide receiver. So in the sixth round, uh, you can give me cup all day. Mark Ingram, bro, it's just like, it's just that Baltimore backfield. They're not committing to one guy. It's the same thing with Philly. Like, you can get your hopes up for it to happen. And Mark Ingram, sure, he might have a couple games where he goes, you know, 15 for 80, catches three balls for 25 and a touchdown. But I also think there will be plenty of games where he goes 15 for 56 and catches one ball for eight yards and no touchdowns. I think that's going to be... The majority of Mark Ingram's games, so I I don't think that um, I don't think the upside is anywhere near where people actually think it is. He's an older running back. His his peak has passed already. Um, the New Orleans Saints offense too. The other thing you have to understand is the, the New Orleans Saints offense is the best offense in the NFL for running backs. Everyone is going to look good there. 
we don't actually know how good Mark Ingram is, do we? Because he's running behind an elite offensive line in one of the best offenses with one of the best coaches and offensive schemes. Can we confidently say that for Baltimore? They're definitely a plus running team that's going to run the ball and be be run heavy in 2019. But I, I don't know. I, I, like, I would much rather take a guy, like, if all these running backs are going in the same area, I would take any of the ones in the fifth round over Mark Ingram without a doubt. I would take Cooper Cup, like I just did, Chris Godwin over Mark Ingram. If you're in a super flex league and Russell Wilson is still on the board, Carson Wentz, I would absolutely take them over Mark Ingram. Same thing with Corey Davis. Horrible situation. Mariota is a miserable thrower. They don't throw the ball enough. They're going to lean on Derrick Henry really heavily this year, as they did down the stretch last year, which is just not going to give enough attempts for Corey Davis to ever come to fruition of what people think he's going to be. Guys, like that's that's one of my biggest concerns for a lot of players, or a lot of fantasy players, I should say, is I get that the talent is real for Corey Davis, for Kenyon Drake, for Aaron Jones, but but the situation for a lot of guys is just as, or if not more important than the actual talent for the player himself. So Corey Davis, until he has a different um, quarterback or he's on a different team, is is probably not going to do too much for you. Allen Robinson, I also just don't trust trust Mr. Trubisky as a thrower. Um, he's not a great outside thrower, and that's where Allen Robinson obviously, obviously excels. Um, it's a great offensive scheme, but I just I think you're going to get a lot of inconsistency with Allen Robinson. So then we have Kenyon Drake. Same thing. I have no idea what's going to happen in the Miami backfield. Um, Cooper Cup, Chris Godwin, DJ Moore. I think those are three solid picks. Russell Wilson, like that. Now we're seeing a little bit of the tight end run. I can't believe OJ Howard fell three rounds after Kittle. So that's going to be my, that's going to probably be my strategy for most drafts. If I don't grab one of these top three tight ends, which I really need to, I know in my E Town Get Down League, Kittle's already off the board. He's going to be a 10th round keeper, which sucks. Um, OJ Howard will be my target there. I, if, if I have to reach up around to get him in, in round five or possibly round four, depending on if these guys are there in round four, like a Marlon Mack, there's no way I'm going to go for Howard, but round five, I'll be, I'll be, uh, probably grabbing him there. Tyler Lockett strong at 702. Eh, not with Tyler Boyd. Mike Williams, eh, yeah, I'm not huge on, why are all these guys like, why do I have them on the, my watch list? Get them off my watch list, sleeper. Also, I mean, obviously no rookies are in this because they haven't been drafted yet. Once the draft happens, great fucking stack by Jay Clink. Wow, that's a team. So Clink went Zeke at three, Julio Jones at two, two eight, Chubb at the three three. Then he has Deshaun Watson and Carson Wentz as his two quarterbacks. Robert Woods all the way down in the fifth, and OJ Howard as his tight end. That is a beautiful start to the draft. Someone asked in the chat, how do you guys feel about drafting who you believe is the best player available compared to drafting to fill out the rest of your starting lineup? Um, it's a great question. I will usually go, I'm going to type it in. Um, I also think that question, what, what I what I answered is I'll usually go starting lineup plus one. So if I already fill out my wide receiver spots in my starting lineup, but my pick comes and the next, the best player available is a wide receiver, I'm okay grabbing, um, <clears throat> I'm okay grabbing the wide receiver as my next pick as well. So 
So I'll go one, but I probably wouldn't push it much further past that. Um, Oh, I for, totally forgot to ask Dr. Jesse Morse about Philip Lindsay. Damn. Um, I, I probably wouldn't push it much further past that. I will say, though, uh, the smaller your league is, the 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 more important your starting lineup is. The bigger the league is, I will always take best player available because you could use them as trade pieces. Okay, so wide receiver, I actually think there's a ton of value about running back right here. So Philip Lindsay fell all the way to seventh. A lot of people are fading him. See, a lot of, when I do my subscriber leagues, like people take into my analysis, obviously a, a lot heavier than uh, other people. So they have a lot of the same um, mindset as me. So Chris Carson and Philip Lindsay are both guys that I'm absolutely looking at right now. Um, I'll probably go with Chris Carson. I think if there's, uh, I think there's no way Philip Lindsay gets a featured workload this year. Coming off the injury, he's not going to be back for OTAs. They already pretty much said, which means it's a completely new coaching staff. And I think Royce Freeman is going to get a legitimate shot at, um, at at least like a 50-50 split. At least a 50-50 split. Um, and, and, you know, they have no allegiance to... They have no allegiance to... Philip Lindsay. And I know he's good, but like he's going to miss time. So it's going to be uh, a weird situation. And again, he's small and we don't really have a track record of a guy his size being able to handle that kind of workload over a full season, especially over multiple full seasons. And you and you saw as the year went down, he got a little bit worse and then he got hurt, of course. So if, if there's one of these starting running backs between Carson and Lindsay, I'm more excited about this year. It's Carson, although I'm not excited about Carson because I think Rashad Penny has a realistic shot to take over that backfield. Um, but I do need to secure my wide receiver two roll as well as my super flex spot. I like Jameis Winston here a lot. I even like Drew Brees. They have him all the way down there, huh? Cam Newton, Matt Ryan. Yeah, there's a lot of good quarterbacks left right now. I wonder if they auto pick another wide. <laughs> they auto picked another wide receiver for him. What kind of fucking auto pick system you got going on, sleeper? What are you doing? I hope they go with an, like a fucking seventh wide receiver. Okay, well that's gonna go a lot quicker. I didn't realize I could set <laughs> set it to auto pick. My bad. Okay, so Marvin Jones, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of a, of a bounce back from Marvin Jones. We saw Royce Freeman go off the board. So listen, I mean, this is a legitimate draft, and we just saw Royce Freeman go two picks after Philip Lindsay. So I I think by the time drafts come around, that's going to be a realistic um, ADP gap, and I think Chris Carson and Rashad Penny ADP gap is probably about to be somewhat similar. Um, I don't need any more running backs right now. Wide receiver Will Fuller. <laughs> Should I go with a fourth Chief? If Tyreek Hill misses time, I think Sammy Watkins is low key like a great bargain. But I'm I'm gonna fade that because I don't want to go with four Chiefs as of right now. I'm probably gonna take a quarterback because I see some good value between Cam Newton. Mm, I don't know if I want to go with Cam Newton. Just that shoulder thing kind of scares me. I like I like Matt Ryan a lot. I like Jameis Winston a lot as well. Um, I think I'll go with Matt Ryan here. He's like a, my number five or six ranked quarterback right now in my rankings. <clears throat> and uh, if you are Looking for rankings, or if you're looking for a draft kit for your 2019 season, I uh, I'm in the midst of creating mine. Every every summer I do a draft kit, and it has my two 250 board, my big board. It has my positional rankings by tiers. It has my top sleepers, my top busts, my must draft players, which included guys like Juju Sanders, Saquon Barkley, Michael Thomas, Stephon Diggs last year. So I fucking nailed that entire section. Um, just a million different like really awesome, awesome, awesome features in the draft kit. And if you're watching this Friday, you have three days to pre-order it right now for 25% off discount. BigDogsDraftGuy.com. 
there's literally a ton of information. It's going to be like 100 pages deep. It'll have offensive line ranks. It'll have um, exclusive articles about the fantasy football industry. So it's kind of like a, a lifestyle draft kit, but it'll it'll have a ridiculous amount of It'll give you more value than any other draft kit that you'll find online. I can promise you that. Um, it also has my big dog Bible, which is basically like an 8,000 word article that I write every summer. And it goes position by position, exactly how you should attack each draft or each, uh, each position in your draft, um, super in depth. So that is, uh, that is available right now on big dogs, get it 25% off before Monday. The dynasty rookie guide is also available. There are two different guides and that is breaking down all of the prospects and that goes live on Monday. So the pre-order price goes away on Monday, but it actually goes live on Monday and that is updated. All of these things are updated throughout the entire summer. So if you're going to buy some shitty ass magazine in 7-Eleven, you might as well pay the extra $11 and get this online one that is going to be updated and new things are going to be added to it throughout the entire summer. Like rankings are going to be updated. You'll get my full dynasty rankings, rookie rankings, big board rankings, all the goddamn rankings. <clears throat> Go get them. Love you. So, ah, it's baseball opening day today, huh? I'm filming this on Thursday, so if anything happens on Thursday, I don't know what you want from me, guys. I can't film this in real time. I still love you, though. The Fantasy Show up. Okay, so we had, uh, there we go, there's the quarter, I set off a little quarterback run there. We had Matt Ryan, Winston, Cam Newton, Mitch Trubisky go off the board. This is an interesting debate here. Once you go past O.J. Howard and Hunter Henry at tight end, the tight end position, that's why I really want to get one of these top four tight ends, because there are red flags for Njoku, for Ingram, and Eric Ebron. Just a few weeks ago, felt like they were safe picks. But Hunter, uh, but David Njoku now, they bring on OBJ. So it's like, he's going to be a lot more volatile as a producer, because... We just don't know um, how many targets he's going to get with OBJ there, who's probably going to get 150. And you have Jarvis Landry, of course. Um, they're going to run. They're going to be a very run-heavy team with Nick Chubb, in my opinion. So it's hard to, uh, you know, see David Njoku be a consistent producer. Evan Ingram, they, you know, they got rid of OBJ, so he got super excited, and then they grabbed Golden Tate, who is obviously a slot receiver, and he's going to be running routes over the middle. So Ingram's more of like a seam guy. I know that he's more of like a deep threat kind of. Uh, but the Golden Tate still gives me pause. And Eric Ebron, of course, they bring in Devin Funches. So his touchdown numbers are going to go down. We're going to have a healthy, well, maybe a healthy Jack Doyle. So uh, I highly doubt he comes close to hitting his numbers from last year. So it's, uh, it's a really, really murky situation at tight end. So if I can give you one piece of advice, it would be to attack one of these top four tight ends, do so in the first five rounds, and be done with the position. <clears throat> um, I, I am all about Travis Kelsey in the second round, too, in, in, in redraft league. So... Dante Pettis, Tevin Coleman. <clears throat> I want me some Christian Kirk. Give me Kirky. Kirky, Kirky. How's Julian Edelman all the way down here? This is ridiculous. What kind of fucking system they got going over here? No one sees Julian Edelman. I'm going to fucking swipe him and people are going to get pissed. Going to get pissed. <clears throat> all right, running backs. Let me talk about some of the guys on the list here. Kareem Hunt, no, he's not someone I'm going to be touching in a redraft. I think he's going to fuck with Chubb a little bit when he comes back. At least be like in the pass catching role. Because he's only gone for eight weeks. So when he is back, by the time he's like kind of put back into the offense, it'll be around playoff time for um, fantasy playoffs. And that's going to lower Chubb's workload, of course. Jordan Howard, nah, he's getting traded or cut. Lamar Miller, that's a great pick in the ninth round. Listen, they haven't even been linked to... Oh, great pick at tight end. Vance McDonald. Good stuff right there, uh, Zach. Forgot about Vance. These the rankings when you do them from site to site, it's it's hard to remember all the players on the board because the rankings are just so different. Oh, like Latavius Murray, I think is a fantastic pick down here. I'll probably see if I can grab him on the way back. Let me make sure I'm just not missing anybody when I go down the list. See, like Julian Edelman all the way down here is like the only reason he fell this far is because people forgot about him. But without Gronk, like Julian Edelman might get 150 targets this year. Let's get it. So he's my wide receiver too. Imagine having this team and getting Julian Edelman as your wide receiver too. So we have Patrick Mahomes and Matt Ryan as my quarterbacks and super flex. Travis Kelsey at tight end. Damian Williams, Marlon Mack, Derrick Henry, Pierce Carson as my running backs and flex. Cooper Cup, Julian Edelman as my two wide receivers. <clears throat> I'd be very happy about this team. Looking back on it though, 
<clears throat> um, looking back on it, I would probably not take Patrick Mahomes at the one. I would probably rather a guy like Deshaun Watson in the fourth round and be able to take uh, Dalvin Cook or one of these top wide receivers in Devontae Adams or Julio Jones or something like that um, so that my, my skill positions would be a lot more well-rounded. So I, I don't realistically think, like Patrick Mahomes, of course, is in, insane and he's going to have an amazing uh, year this year, but I don't think the drop-off between Mahomes and Andrew Luck or Deshaun Watson is going to be anywhere near the gap that it was last year which obviously makes his value a little bit worse, but I kind of wanted to do a realistic, um, a realistic draft here. And I know Mahomes is going to go in, in the beginning of um, almost all these picks in, in the first round of all the super flex leagues. So we let the auto pick kind of just fuck things up a little more for Skono. Eric Ebron went off the board in the ninth round. Where are we looking? So my, I mean, my starting roster is filled. Like I said, I don't really look at that. But if I need a, if I need depth somewhere, it's definitely at wide receiver. Unless I see something good at running back, which I really don't. And again, these rookies will come into play. I actually like Latavius Murray a lot, so I might grab him. Could never have too many running backs, man. Especially if you can if you can get five running backs, then you pretty much you know like five running backs pretty early on. You don't have to worry about the position again. In your draft, at least. And then you could take a lot of flyers on high upside later around picks. Um, someone like a Gallup. I like Kiki QT a lot. Um, don't at me about James Washington. <clears throat> Doug Baldwin. Okay. Mm. See, where I'm at right now, though, is like I don't have any depth at wide receiver. All I have is Cooper Cup and Julian Edelman. <clears throat> and by the time it comes back to me, like there's going to be there's going to be almost nothing left at wide receiver. So I kind of want to grab Kiki QT or something right now. Although I would like Latavius Murray, but I think it would make my roster construction a little bit better. Um, I like Anthony Miller a lot too, actually. I totally didn't mean to draft him, but I'll take him there. That's cool. I probably, realistically, I would have went with Kiki QT. Anytime QT is on the field with Deshaun Watson, he is a stud. And if something were to happen to Will Fuller, which is a very likely chance of that happening... Um, QT explodes. He, he had a lot of really big game lines last year. You see 21.7, 17.3, 12.7. He only played in six games, and three of them were three of them were 12 and a half points or more. I think he's a very talented player, and I think he's going to be very overlooked, and I think he's going to be a really solid PPR play for a lot of people. Let's go, people. All right, all right, all right. I'll back off. <clears throat> I also, this is another reason why I would kind of fade. I would look to fade. Um, that's a great team by Zach right there. I really like what Zach did here. So Zach went Kamara in the first round. Juju at the 2-5. I love Juju. Um, if you if you ever want to see my, if you ever want to hear my like very in-depth breakdowns of these players, I do them in like my wide receiver rankings videos. Next week, I'm actually starting up the, I'm going to redo my rankings for running backs, wide receivers, and things like that. So uh, stay tuned and I'll break them down pretty much in depth. Kamara, Juju. And then he went with, he basically went with uh, three wide receivers or five wide receivers over the next six rounds. Juju, Cooper, T.Y. Hilton, D.J. Moore, Tyler Boyd. I love that stacking of five wide receivers. Darius Geis all the way down in the fifth round. Um, I love that because as Geis gets more acquainted, you know, with the NFL game um, coming back from the injury, Alvin Kamara can pretty much, you know, pick up any of the slack that Geis has. Great depth at wide receiver. And then he waited all the way to the eighth round and grabbed James Winston and Dak Prescott, as, as well as Vance McDonald, who is probably like the sleeper tight end of this of this year's draft. Um, so this is a really, really good roster. Um, and, and it seems now, looking at, at the quarterback position for Superflex, it, it almost seems like the right move is to just wait. Uh, maybe not wait all the way down to here, because I don't think Winston and Dak will probably fall this far in draft. Same thing with Drew Brees. Um I don't think he'll fall this far in drafts, but like you could see the quarterback position again is deep to the point where like you don't necessarily want to have, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy G and Philip Rivers as your two starting quarterbacks, but like that's, you could do a lot worse than that. So you could wait all the way until the 10th, 11th round and still get two of those guys as your super flex quarterbacks and just, you know, have taken, I could have got like a Royce Freeman for where Matt Ryan is and obviously a stud in the first round where Patrick Mahomes was. And you'd probably feel a little bit better about your team overall. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> a lot of solid teams. I like, uh, I can't see his, was that a V? Von Ratzbein, are you from Germany, bro? D Hop, Mike Evans, solid pairing. Got one of the top three tight ends. They went carry on. Devonta, like I said, I don't love Devonta. I think I, I think he's going to be a problem this year for people who own him. Russell and Cam, solid pairing if they can let Russell throw the damn ball. Tariq Cohen and Lamar Miller as backup, solid Kiki QT. Good stuff there, my man. So Breeze, Brady, and Kirk. A few vets going off the board. I'm really surprised Breeze is going all the way in the 10th round. I get that they didn't throw the ball that much, but like he's still, from an efficiency standpoint, he was great. I'm hoping Latavius Murray falls to me here as one of my backup running backs. I mean, Latavius goes to New Orleans, and I, I don't think it's absurd to think that Latavius puts up as good, if not better, numbers than, um, than Mark Ingram did there. Mark Ingram was not a great quarterback, uh, running back, and Latavius has a very similar skill set, but he's a lot faster. And New Orleans gives you a lot of holes. And Latavius Murray is like a 4-3, 4-4 guy in his 40, so he could break a few long runs um, and actually put up better rushing numbers than Ingram did. And Latavius Murray, we've seen be involved in the passing game a lot. We've seen him be very, very good on the goal line, and that's a role that um, Mark Ingram was heavily involved in. So, like, I I think Latavius Murray is going to be a very, very sneaky good play this year in fantasy, even in in dynasty leagues, because he got signed to a four-year contract. I wouldn't be surprised if he put up really productive number i'm not sure if it's like what the actual contract details are if it's like backloaded or not um actually let's let's take a look um if you guys ever want to look for contract details spotrack it's like abbreviation of sports contract spotrack is that has all the uh all the contract details for players so latavius murray is signed through 2022 the next two years, the dead cap hit would be seven point two million. Obviously, they're not going to just cut them after they just signed them. Next year would be five and a half, and then it go- gets down to one point seven. So he'll almost guaranteed be down. Um, will be on the team for the next two years. They could possibly cut him twenty twenty one. I would say that they're probably going to keep him for three years. So um, I-, I think he's a good dynasty pick. If, if you're if it, you shouldn't be looking too far ahead when it comes to dynasty, I would say like three years is the max you think you can potentially um, project a player. So Latavius is a, is a low key like very good buy I think at the end of at the end of dress because he's a little older so people are going to stay off him a little bit but uh, I, I think he has a really good fill in potential I'm going to grab him here as long as C Nick don't do it don't do me dirty player <clears throat> Jarek McKinnon's still on the board in the 11th everyone's just completely staying away who was the first did Tevin Coleman go off the board let me check yeah he did so Tevin Coleman went off in the ninth Jarek McKinnon and Matt Breed are still available in the 11th. I would imagine Jarek McKinnon is probably the first one off the board, and I would imagine as well that he's probably going to go somewhere in like the 6th to 7th range. Am I on? Oh, no, I'm not on the clock. <clears throat> so we have five more rounds left. Or I have five more picks left. We're almost done with the with the draft. Here we go. Mm-hmm. And in Superflex, I always take a third quarterback. I always take a third quarterback. Maybe not this late, but like, for instance, um, <clears throat> Polly, I can't see the, the stupid ass dots in the way. Polly, Polly Panda. Okay. <laughs> what kind of fucking name is that? Uh, Polly, Polly Panda went with three quarterbacks pretty early on. Where's Latavius? Did Latavius Murray already get picked? No, he didn't. Where, where are you at, dog? Oh, there he is. <clears throat> um,. So he went with Andrew Luck, then Jared Goff, and he went with Drew Brees in the 10th round. I think that's fantastic value. Um, I'm not necessarily looking to get my third quarterback spot filled up really quickly, but listen, their injuries happen, players fall off, so having a third quarterback, and there's bye weeks, of course, so you need a third quarterback. Having a third quarterback as good as Drew Brees is is an absolute, you know, it's it's a luxury, but it's a great luxury to have in a super flex league. So I'm perfectly okay grabbing a third quarterback if you see the value like a Drew Brees in the 10th round that early. Because you will, you will not regret it. We'll put it that way. So things are slowing down. The enthusiasm is, is at an all-time low right now. Josh Allen off the board. There we go. <clears throat> so there we go. Matt Breida, Trey Burton off the board. For the, for the auto pick team. He hasn't even selected a fucking quarterback yet. That's incredible. 
I would probably think about taking Jarek McKinnon here if he's still available on my pick. Um, I, some other late later round guys. I like Austin Eckler too. P- people are sleeping on him because of um, him getting hurt and and not playing as well. But again, I, I still think he's just a backup guy for Melvin Gordon, and that's a good spot to be in. Especially if you're a Melvin Gordon owner, I think Austin Eckler again should be a guy that you draft in Dynasty. It, in Dynasty, I love Austin Eckler because he's going to be a free agent next year, and some team is going to scoop him up and, and do really well with him. Big fan of Ito Smith. Like I said, I, I don't envision good things for Devonta Freeman. The head coaching staff has come out and said they want to get Ito Smith way more involved this year. Deonta Foreman, I'm more confident in him after talking to Dr. Jesse Morse, who thinks two years off the Achilles injury will serve him a lot better than last year. But I do need to shore up my wide receivers a little bit because I only have three on my roster. Um don't like James Washington, John Brown, D.D. Westbrook. Uh, I would probably take Michael Gallup. I don't like Michael Gallup that much, but let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> love A.J. Brown. Love Nikhil Harry. Just going to wait for to see where they end up falling. Mm-hmm. Oh, Deshaun Jackson. Oh, Larry Fitz. Give me all the Larry Fitz here. I'll take late round Larry Fitz. Late round Larry Fitz. Late round Larry Fitz. I'm all in on, on this Arizona offense, making a little bit of a bounce back, except for David Johnson. Contradicts everything I just said about David Johnson like six minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna write off Larry Fitz because of last year, that's 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 unfair because the entire offense is horrible. They're gonna pass the ball way, 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 way more with Cliff Kingsbury here. It's gonna be like sixty five percent pass pass rate, if not higher. Him coming with that air raid offense. And you look at the slot wide receivers, man that that did work for Cliff Kingsbury in college. The last five years as, as a coach in college, he had Kiki QT and Jakeem Grant, and they had absolute monster years. Of all five years running, it was like 65-plus receptions, 900, 1,000 yards uh, in college. And those are big numbers for college. And Fitz is the slot guy. Christian Kirk runs like 65% of his routes on the outside. Fitz is a 65% slot guy. So I think that is going to be um, – a massive, a massive, massive, massive play for Larry Fitz. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be easily a wide receiver three, and I think he actually has some upside there too. Um, we don't have a kicker. None of the leagues I play in anymore ha- have kickers in them. If you, I could, I'm, I'm telling you, like if if you can make one change to your league this off season, it is to get rid of kickers. It is just like. You have no fucking way of projecting what they're going to do. Like, all they do is piss you off. And one, one, it's like, if you try to change your kicker, you end up getting the guy who scores three points that week. You, you swap him over for a new one to try to stream him. And then that guy gets you three points. But the guy from last week gets 17 points on, on the waiver wire. It's a fucking headache that you don't need to deal with. Just, just don't do it. There's no skill involved when it comes to kickers. So get kickers out of your league. When it comes to defense, last round every time. Look at week one, stream your defenses, and see who has a really easy matchup week one. See who has heavy favorites, yada, yada, yada. I have to pee really bad, so you guys can just watch the chat, watch the draft board. We're starting to see some rookies go off. I'll be RBs. Alright, we bike. John Jackson, DK, Sam Darnold. I like Sam Darnold as a late round uh as a late round quarterback in Superflex. He's a perfect quarterback three in this in this uh Oh, we're taking rooms, some rooks. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm fucking with Ro- Ro- Oh, it's Roly Poly Panda. That was Polly Poly Panda. 
I didn't see because the stupid ass green thing up there. Um, so you got James Washington go off the board, Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford all the way in the 12th, too, is a great third quarterback to have. I'll probably start to look at my third quarterback as well. Big Ben is still on the board. That's See, that is also the good thing is like these guys that I uh... – <laughs> these guys that are my subscribers, obviously like – for instance, I, I Ben Roethlisberger was like the first guy on my list in terms of like players to avoid this year. They watch it, and then he drops all the way down to like the 13th round in a super flex, which is, of course, I don't want Ben Roethlisberger on my team. But listen, they're, they're, don't hate the player, hate the ADP. The only reason he was on my players to avoid is because he finished as quarterback two or three in fantasy last year. And if he's getting drafted anywhere near that range, he's a bad pick. But if he's going off the board as quarterback, let me see. One, two, three, four, five. So he'll be the 24th quarterback off the board, which is absurd. Um, so every, every man has his price, okay? Oh, Kyler Murray on the board, too. If he's going to Arizona, he's easily like a top 15 quarterback in fantasy. Who else we got here? I like Austin Eckler a lot. Let me see what, what kind of action I got. So I got three running backs, four wide receivers. Um... Ooh, I like I like uh, that Rex Burkhead pick at thirteen. Rex Burkhead is gonna, dude. He, you know, the Patriots want to use him. We saw him when he came back last year. We saw him when he came back last year. He had games with, with 17 touches, I think 21 touches, 13 touches. Um, and that was when he was fully healthy. And that was with Sonny Michelle and James White there. And Rex Burkhead is a guy with a skill set that can do it all, right? If one of those guys gets hurt, if James White or Sonny Michelle gets hurt, Rex Burkhead fills in for that slot. I, I think it's just, a, it's just a fantastic opportunity for Rex Burkhead to be a great sleeper pick. Um also, with Gronk gone, like you, I think Rex Burkhead is going to be lined up in the slot a lot too. I think he's going to be used outside, and it's just it's going to be a very, very good situation for him. Ooh, Peyton Barber's all the way down here. Like uh, that's the only time you'll hear anyone get excited about fucking Peyton Barber. Uh, but you know what, dude? Peyton Barber low key was like not the worst last year. I'm going to pull up a, a stat that I tweeted out the other day. I'm actually going to take him real quick. Where's my guy, Peyton Barber? Um, tweeter, tweeter. Let me see if I can find you. Yeah, so make sure you're following me on Twitter because if I do stuff like this where I'm involving my subscribers, I usually tweet it out. Here we go. So Peyton Barber last year had the ninth most carries in the NFL, which is fucking crazy. Um, he had the fifth most evaded tackles overall, 10th in evaded, evaded tackles per attempt. So Peyton Barber low-key was not that bad, um, but they just had no goal line opportunities. The, the overall offense was just a mess. Um, and I actually, you know, Bruce Arians has been talking him up a lot. So it's very obviously going to depend on what they do in the draft. It's possible that... Um, it's possible that they, they take a running back early, although they did that last year. Ah, oh, damn, there goes Ben. Oh, I should have took Ben Roethlisberger. What an idiot I am. Um, hmm. So now I need to take a third quarterback, and there are not a lot left on the board. I'm going to go piss everybody off and take uh, Kyler Murray.
so back to Peyton Barber. Yeah, I mean, listen. If they don't end up drafting someone, at least within the first like three rounds, I would maybe four rounds, Peyton Barber's gonna have a legitimate shot to take over that backfield and be the guy in that backfield again. And this offense on paper should be a lot better um, and get a lot more opportunities. And Bruce Arians really likes Barber, so I think like he he's a low key val- val- value. So we had Sterling Shepard, Austin Eckler, good pick with Eckler. Let's see, that's that's two good values at running back late in the draft there. Burkhead, Austin Eckler. People are just taking rookies now for the hell of it. Let's see. Josh Jacob, come on, bro. Make the pick. Okay, defense, this is where I would go to. Look at the schedule for week one. I don't even know if it's up yet on here. Let me see. I don't know if they have the lines up, but I would look. Okay, they don't have it yet, but I would look at the lines for the first game. I would take the team that's heavily favored at home with a low over-under, and that would be my defense for week one, and I would stream their fourth and after. guy's arguing with me when his running back won first of all he went mike williams and Cortland sutton as his flex plays running back one is tevin coleman deon lewis jay jay and dk oh he's a dk metcalf guy okay he just has no sense in him that's fine roly poly you fucking started me off our uh Started me off on a fucking tangent. Now I'm pissed. I still love you, though. It's all love.
mejor. Don't be like me. Don't make don't make fucking YouTube videos where I don't. I don't have a deaf. Gronk won in the last round. <laughs> okay. I don't know if he knew he was retired or not, but he might come bike. I'm going to do something ignorant right now. I'm going to take Trace McSwirly. Who's Lamar Jordan? I'm going to take something ridiculous. Taking Peterman. Peter God. Ah, uh, Mike Davis is a great late round pick. <laughs> and that will... Conclude the draft. So, you have my team, Patrick Mahomes and Matt Ryan are my two starting quarterbacks. My running backs are Damian Williams, Marlon Mack, flexing Derrick Henry, Chris Carson, Cooper Cup and Julian Edelman as wide receivers, Anthony Miller, Larry Fitz on the bench, Peyton Barber and Latavius Murray on the bench as well, Kyler Murray and... And that's that. So uh, make sure that you hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed. Make sure that you uh, let me know who you think has the best team. I'll leave this up here for you so you can just hit pause on the screen and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm a big fan of Zach's team. Um, <laughs> Scono fucking reeling off the six wide receivers was classic. Uh, I, I don't have time to look at every one of these teams. But let me know who you think has the best team. Subscribe if you're new to the channel because we're doing this every Friday along with other fantasy videos throughout the week. And, uh, and that's really it. So I love y'all. Peace out. Goodbye. Go cop the draft guide. BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Peace.